Good morning, everyone. Would you stand to your feet and worship the Lord this morning? Are you excited to worship the Lord this morning? Amen. He is here. He is here. And He's here to turn it around. Amen. He's here to turn it around. I have some good news for you. If you came in with a problem, God's here to turn it around.
is we got to call things that aren't as if they were. Amen? So even though it seems like he's not, he's fighting for you. The battle belongs to him. Amen? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. When I see the battle, you see.
we know that joy comes in the morning. Amen. Come on, every hand lifted up. Come on. Hallelujah. Every hand lifted up. going to be all right yeah yeah if God brought us this far he'll bring us the rest of the way amen I said if God's brought us this far he's gonna bring us the rest of the way what he's begun he's gonna bring to completion and he's the author and finisher of our faith amen Lord we thank you for your presence in this place we give you all the glory we give you all the honor and Lord, we just thank you for your mercy and your grace. Your mercy and your grace. Your patience and your love with us. Thank you for allowing us to be here today. To be able to lift up your name. To come with a heart of thanksgiving. To say thank you for all you've done. To say thank you for all you're going to do. And uh, Lord, we just ask you to continue to have your way here. Holy Spirit, precious Holy Spirit. We ask that you have your way in this place, your church, your people. We pray your will to be done. We thank you for the cross, Jesus. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. All the glory and all the honor. All the glory and all the honor. All the glory, all the honor. And Lord, once again in this place, and people watching online, not one of us to walk out the same way we came in, 
or walk away from this service the same way we started. Touch, heal, deliver, strengthen, encourage. Like a chiropractor, Lord, in the spirit, we surrender to you to make the adjustments that are needed in our lives. We say, Lord, have your way with us. We need some adjusting. Anybody need some adjusting? Lord, we surrender to you in the spirit to adjust us, to do what you need to get us in the right, in the, in, in, in the proper order so we can go forward and function at a high level to impact the world around us. So Lord, have your way in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Praise the Lord. Amen. To everybody online, thank you for joining us. God bless every one of you. Amen. We're so glad you joined us and so glad to see everybody here today. Praise God. Um, just for a few minutes, I just, I just, um, uh, just want to encourage us, encourage us um, this morning. If you're in a place... Um, if you're going through something, as Pastor Tony said last night, you know, a valley, um, a trial, tribulation, a desert um, experience in your life, um, circumstances have been introduced in your life that are overwhelming. You feel like you're being squeezed from every side, and uh, for some, you know, you're ready to lose your mind. <laughs> Can I get an amen? Just, a, just life and things. And, um, and as, I was, as I think about, um, at first glance, you, you know, when you're going through something, it's not, it's not comfortable, right? And, and you're like, man, I want out of this place. Lord, Lord, deliver me. Get me out. Lord, make a way. Or maybe some enemies that are coming against us or choices that we have made or whatever it might be our first response to what we're going through is like lord you know get me out of this place and as i was thinking about that i was thinking about on the topic of you know valleys and i, I just want to go for a few minutes to a place called a place called the valley of Elah, the Valley of Elah, and um, it's found in, you don't have to turn there yet, 1 Samuel chapter 17, and as you take, as we take a closer look to the Valley of Elah, and we see the, um, the lack of attractiveness, dryness, and fruitfulness, fruitless, fru fruitlessness. I should say, a cry comes out and says, and this is how we are, right? Can we go somewhere else? Who wants to be in that place? Look at some and say, not me. And uh, I have no desire to even spend a second in this valley. And as we take a closer look at the Valley of Elah, this place that is empty, dry and very 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 uncomfortable there is a there's a shout there's there's a shout a loud shout that comes from the valley and the bible tells us the owner of the shout in first samuel chapter 17 verse 8 through 11 the bible lets us know the owner of the shout the bible says goliath stood and shouted or cried out to the ranks of israel why do you come and why don't you come out and line up for battle am i not a philistine are you not the servants of saul choose a man and have him come down to me if he is able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. But if I overcome him and kill him, you will be become our subjects 
and serve us. Then the Philistine said, this day, this day, I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. On hearing the Philistines' words, Saul and all the Israelites were dismayed and terrified or greatly afraid. They were dismayed and greatly afraid. And like the Israelites, after hearing and seeing the size of this giant for moving, like the, like the Israelites, after hearing this and seeing the size of this giant, we also have been paralyzed from moving forward. <laughs> and the desire to go somewhere else has increased to the highest level. We want out. We want out of this valley. This is uncomfortable. I don't want to deal with this giant. He's bigger. He's stronger. And today, this morning, this giant in the Valley of Elah is symbolic in our lives of the giant of guilt and shame that we deal with, the giant of depression, the giant of rejection, the giant of habits and cycles that we've tried to break loose from, the giant of loneliness, the giant of failures that we can't forget about in the past. The giant of worry and stress. The giant of pride. The giant of jealousy. The giant of anger. This giant in the Valley of Eli is symbolic here for us today. The giant of lust. The giant of an abusive relationship or emotional hurts uh, the giant of the coronavirus the giant this valley that's uncomfortable the giant of what if i try and fail again the giant of the battle in your mind of God doesn't love me. And you know, I know, you know, you're giant. I know. I know, and if we're honest with ourselves, we know our giant in our lives. The thunder of his voice. And we recognize his walk. And like the Israelites, some of us here today and watching at home, are paralyzed with fear, frustrated. We want to cancel our tickets to this destination called Elah, this valley, this, this place that's uncomfortable. Frustrated. We want to cancel this, this destination. We don't, we don't want to go there. We don't want to stay there. We don't want to... We want out. We want out. We don't, we don't want to stay there any longer. But my friends here this morning, this destination, 
this valley, this place is a must. We cannot cancel our tickets. We must travel to this valley. We must travel to this valley. We must travel to this valley. Called Elah. The Bible tells us, watch me. In chapter 17, once again, in verse 2, And they encamped in the valley of Elah and drew up in battle array against the Philistines. The Philistines stood, stood on a mountain on one side, and the Israelites stood on a mountain on the other side, with a valley between them. And the Bible says in verse, in verse 45, someone arises up from Israel finally. A boy, a young man, by the name of David. You know the story. All of Israel and the king, full of fear. No one wanted to face this giant. Not one of them. The whole nation, all the soldiers, all the military personnel, the king himself. Nobody was willing to take a step and go into that valley and face the giant. But the Bible says when David found out about what was going on, he said, I'll go. He didn't run from the valley. He was willing to go in the valley. Watch this. Then in verse 45, the Bible says in chapter 17 of 1 Samuel, then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. The God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth. That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear. Mm. For the battle is the Lord's. And the battle is the Lord's. Did you know that the battle doesn't belong to you? The battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. I said the battle doesn't belong to you. The battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. He just needs our availability and our willingness and our obedience to surrender to him, to follow him, and God says, I'll take care of the rest. The battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And the Bible goes on to let us know in verse 50, so David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword and drew it out of its sheath and killed him and cut his head with it. See, David understood that this giant stood in the way of his greatness. David understood that this giant needed to be dealt with. If he was to fulfill his greatness and his purpose, he couldn't run from the giant. He needed to deal with the giant. He didn't run from the giant. He faced his giant. He understood that Goliath stood in the way of his greatness. Even though it was uncomfortable, messy.
He understood that I need to deal with this giant. I need to deal with this giant. And when we have a tendency when we go through valleys in our lives, we want to run, we want to get out of those valleys. We want to, we want to go in a different direction. But the reality is here, and here's your word. Here's the word. That our valleys are really a blessing in disguise. Because it's in our valley that we face our giant. We face the thing that is hindering us, holding us back from moving forward and being the voices God's called us to be, the champions that God's called us to be, fulfilling our purpose and our destination that God's called us to. But it's in the valley that David took out the giant. It wasn't on a mountaintop. It wasn't, it wasn't David had a whole bunch of soldiers with him that helped him. We need to face our giant. We need to face our giant. Confront our giant. If we want to have breakthrough and victory, we can't have breakthrough and victory if we don't confront the giant that is in front of us. And it's in the valley that we're in and we're going through that God gets our attention and reveals to us, we see clearly the giant or giants that we're dealing with in our lives. And it's in the valley that we go through the hard places, the difficult times, that we take out our giants in the valley. In the valley is where our giants fall. So I want to encourage you, be still and know that he's God in your valley. I want to encourage you here this morning, if God's for you, who can be against you? I want to encourage you here this morning, if God's brought you this far, he'll take you the rest of the way. I want to encourage you this morning, don't run from the valley, but move forward understanding who you are in God, that God is with you, and God is working all things together, and God is working it for your good to take out some giants that have been messing with you for a long time, amen? Your giants fall in the valley. In the valley. In the valley. In the valley. He didn't try to go around the giant. He faced his giant. He faced his giant. And many of us here are dealing with giants in our lives. And God's saying, the battle doesn't belong to you. The battle belongs to me. But I need your willingness to know that I am with you. That it's my power. It, 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 it's by my hand. All I need from you is faith. Faith. Faith to trust in me. Faith to know if I'm with you, you're the majority. Faith to have the willingness to say, okay, I have this giant and it's real. And I'm done running. I'm done hiding. 
I'm done standing and being paralyzed and allowing fear to hold me back. I'm going to face this giant this day once and for all. And when it's all said and done, God's going to get the glory in Jesus' name. Could someone shout hallelujah? I'm here to tell you, if you don't run from your giant and you are willing to move forward, your giant will fall in your valley in Jesus' name. Some of my greatest giants that I've dealt with in my life, I've dealt with in a valley. Because the valley has a way of getting our attention. <laughs> the valley has a way of getting our attention when you realize you're at your end of your rope. And it's like, if God doesn't show up here, I can't do this. The valley has a way of getting our attention to reveal to us Because a valley, and when you hear the shout of that giant, it has, it's, a, it's a sobering effect of getting our attention to examine ourselves. And then it's in those valleys that you start to realize, man, I got some pride. Because we're so busy when things are going well that we don't check in to examine ourselves daily. And time goes by and we don't realize how prideful we've gotten, how arrogant we've gotten, how jealous we've gotten, how... Do you understand what I'm saying here? We don't understand, like, wow, I've been dealing with this for a long time, but now it's, the valley is actually a blessing because it actually brings us to a place to examine our heart and then to clearly see this is real. This is real in my life. And it's been holding me back from fulfilling my greatness. So this morning, what am I trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is, embrace your valley. And if you handle it the right way, God's going to flex his muscle on your behalf and bring a great victory in your life. Because when David approach the giant the Bible tells us when he was talking David said to the Philistine you come to me with me with me you come to me with sword and with a spear and with javelin but I come to you in the name of the Lord there it is How do you deal with your giants? You come to me with a sword, with a spirit, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. Verse 45, once again, then David said to the Philistine, then David said, everyone else was looking at it from the natural, the size, the shout, but David understood his victory was in the Lord for it was God that helped him defeat the bear and the lion in the past so he knew the same God that helped him back then would be the same God that was going to help him in this situation so watch this but when he approached him David said and decreed and declared the word our words have power You understand that what we speak creates our tomorrow. So when we're in the valley, even though it doesn't look good, it doesn't feel good, and it's not easy, it's at that time we need to pick up the Word of God and decree the Word of God in that situation. Whatever giant you're dealing with, if it's fear, God's saying, stop running and hiding. 
But face it. How do you face it? God, David said, the Bible says, God says, I have not given you. So when that fear tries to come in, you need to decree and declare, God hasn't given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. God hasn't given me, you, you, you might need to walk around your house over and over and decree it and declare it. Because what you're doing is, you're taking out your giant of fear when you're decreeing the word of God. For God hasn't given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Perfect love casts out all fear. God inhabits the praises of his people. And Lord, as I'm putting on worship music right now, I know that, Lord, in your presence, everything else has to go in the name of Jesus. Everything else has to bow. All the giants need to go in the presence of God. God is saying, stop trying to get out of your valley, but rise up, pick up his word, and speak to your giants. Decree and declare the word of God. Pick up the weapons that God has given you. It's time. It's time to understand the valleys are a blessing. They're a place of deliverance. They're a place of liberty. They're a place of freedom. They're a place of healing. They're a place that God helps us take out the giants that have been holding us back from our greatness. It was in the valley that David dealt with the giant and then took his sword, as Pastor Tony said last night, the same sword, I love this, the same sword that the, that the, the Goliath had that he was going to use to kill David is the same sword that David took from Goliath and cut his head off. He cut off. He cut off. He cut off the head of his giant with a giant sword. The sword that was meant to take him out is a sword that David used to take his head off. Oh, God. I believe here tonight, today, that God is saying, the thing, the giant that has been coming against your life, that's been trying to take you out, pull, destroy your life, steal from you, destroy you, take from you. God is saying that same enemy that's been trying to steal, take, destroy, prevent you from moving forward the God is saying if you trust me what he meant to take you out with is what you're going to take <laughs> in your hands and it's going to be a weapon for the glory of God That sword, that trial, whatever you're going through, God is going to use in the future. The thing that was trying to take you out is the thing that's going to bring glory to his name. Oh, God. The thing that was trying to crush you, listen to me carefully. The thing that was trying to crush you, the thing that was trying to take you out, God says, I'm going to put it in your hands. I'm going to give you the head of your giant and you're going to go forward and you're going to decree and declare, this is the God I serve. This is the God I serve. This is like the same God that gave me this head of this giant is the same God that will do it for you. And you're going to go forward, decreeing, declaring, and testifying because that head that was cut off with his own sword, is a testimony that people will see, people will hear. Symbolic, a trophy 
as Pastor Tony said last night, a trophy to decree and declare to the world around us that there is hope, that there is an answer. And no matter what trial, tribulation, what you're going through, what giants you're facing, it's not bigger than God. Look at the giant's head that I'm holding. And it was God that helped me. It was God that gave me the victory. It was God that set. Shall yes. Your valley. Oh, Jesus, kid. Your valley is what? Your valley is what God is using to give you the tools that are necessary for your success in your future. Your valley is prepared. Your valley and your giant that's trying to take you out is what God's going to use and is using if we respond the right way to help us, to strengthen us, to give us wisdom, maturity, strength. So when we come out of the valley, we can have success with the assignment and the purpose that God's called us to. Champions are raised in the valley. Soldiers are made in the valley. Giant killers are created in the valley. Yeah, in the valley. I said in the valley. See, the devil has got us running from the valley, and God's saying, I've called you to the valley. <laughs> Could we go I just, I'm getting this. I'm just getting this over and over. Could we go to James chapter 1? Just for a second. James, this just came in my spirit. James chapter 1, verse 1. Or verse, yeah, verse 1, verse 2. We'll start there. Okay, go to verse 2. Okay, James, my brethren, look at some say, that's you. That's me. Just say, that's us. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Verse 3, knowing, or when you fall and you find yourself in the valley of Elah, and you're facing a giant, knowing that the testing of your faith, see, the valley is preparing us for our future. It's given us backbone. I said it's given us some backbone. It's preparing us for the future battles. It's helping us and preparing us that in the future, the things that used to mess with us in the past don't affect us in our tomorrow. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your altars of... See, David had a battle with a lion and a bear, which prepared him for a giant. But he didn't run from the lion. He didn't run from the bear. He dealt with the lion. He dealt with the bear, knowing who he was in Christ. <laughs> so each time, the things that would have us up in the middle of the night, we're able to sleep through the night with things that 10 years ago had us restless and stressed and up all night long. The valley gives us backbone <laughs> And encouragement to know if my God showed up back then, he'll show up again in the future. But you can't move forward if we want increase, if we want to do greater, if we want to move forward, if we want to accomplish all that God's called us to, we can't go around the valley. We got to go through the valley. Knowing 
that the testing of your faith produces patience. And watch this. Next verse. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete and lacking nothing. And if anyone of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. This to all liberally, liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. The valley. The valley, the testing, the, the trials, is the greatest education you can get. <laughs> and what we're doing is we're, we're leaving class and quitting the course And we're not able to go to the next level because we're not staying in the classroom. The greatest education we can get to prepare us to finish strong for the glory of God is life. And handling our valleys the right way. I said this last night. I'm going to say it again and I'll finish. It's just simple. I just want to encourage you because many are going through some stuff. Many. I know. But I want you to see it from God's point of view that God is saying, no, that's where you're going to deal with your giants once and for all. And the same thing they tried to take you out is the same thing you're going to hold up as a trophy moving forward to get the attention of the world around you. But the greatest education you're going to get, I'm not saying it's about to go to school. But I'm telling you something. There's some things that you can't learn in school. You learn in the valley. I've said today, I'm where I'm at today. And I used to say this. Oh, and I said this last night, and I just wanted to just insert this one more time. That there was a time when I would look back and say, man, if I can go back and just change some things and make different choices. And I've stopped saying that today. Not even today, but in the past year, I stopped saying it. Because I realized that those valleys and those experiences some that i put myself in others that were just part of the course that the enemy was attacking but it's not always the enemy you know that and look at someone and say it's me <laughs> so let's not give the devil the, all the credit for every battle it's the devil it's the devil it's the devil ah, most of the time it's me it's me it's me and here i go again You know, it just came to my mind, my, my little one, my wife, and we read, she reads books to her every night, and then I, there's that book that goes, what, how's it go? She always, every night, or every day, you'll hear her say, the wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. That's how we are with ourselves when we don't do it God's way. We go round and round, round and round, same place, same place, same thing, same situation, same giant, same isn't that the way it goes? The, there's a couple other things on the way. Yeah. I think there's another one where it's like something on the, and the they, they go up and down, up and down. And on the bus. People on the bus go up and down, up and down. Same thing over and over and over and over. Point I'm trying to make is this. Sometimes it's us. But irregardless... If we stop, look up, deal with our giants, we learn, we grow, we move forward, we're stronger because of it, we're wiser because of it, we're better because of it. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? The valleys, when we come out, if we deal with them the right way, we come out with an education from heaven, a degree from heaven. You just graduated the Valley of Elah. You are more sensitive. You got more compassion. You have more understanding. You have greater wisdom. So now I look back. I say, you know what? I'm not gonna, I wouldn't want to change anything because I wouldn't be where I'm at today. Who I am today without it. Did I almost lose my mind multiple? Yes. Was it stressful? Yes. Did I want to give up? More? Yes. Was it messy? Yeah. Was it really messy? Yes. Did it seem at some points the best place for me was a psych ward? Yes. That was a little too much for you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But by the grace of God, eventually I dealt with those giants in my life. And I'm able to stand here with a trophy in my hand or trophies and share something like this today to let you know I've been there. I've come out. Here's the head of my giant. And the same God that gave me his head is the same God that will give you the head of your giants in your life. Shout yeah! Can't get that in a classroom. Someone can say, oh, I, I don't believe what you're... What are you talking about? I've lived it. I've seen him show up. I've seen him take out giants that were there to take out my voice, my purpose, my assignment, this church, my life, everything. I've been there. And he was faithful. I said he was faithful. I said he was faithful. Right eye right here. It's like always interrupting the service. This is just for you. So the same sword, same sword. The Goliath tried with had in his hand to take out David or anybody else that was gonna step up. The same sword that David picked up and chopped off the head of the giant he dealt with. And God has a sword, a head, and a sword. And like Pastor Tony said last night, I like that. A trophy or trophies for you. Not to exalt yourself. Not to say, look at what I did and what I've accomplished. But to say, look at what God did for me. Look at what God, look at how God showed up. This was the enemy's weapon. And now I have it in my hand taking out hindrances and devils and in Jesus name I said in Jesus name in Jesus name I just simply want to say it like this your giants fall in the valley. So stop running from the valleys that you're in and confront the giants in your life. Not in your own strength, not in your own wisdom, but in the faith of God, the Word of God, He spoke the word. Pick up the weapons that God's given you in this, in the spirit.
when you feel like the giant's coming at you, it's like, oh, I'm a failure. I failed so many times. I'm, well, this time, it's like, what if I fail again? What if I fail? It's like, no. That's where you pick up the word of God and you continue to decree it and declare it and speak it over your life and into the atmosphere that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. For God says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper me and not to harm me. Plans to give me a hope in the future. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. If God's with me, who can be against me? God has called me to be successful. For God lets me know in his word that when he spoke to Joshua, he said, as I meditate, as you meditate on the word day and night, I'm going to give you everywhere your foot ste steps into. I'm going to give you that land. You will be successful. You will be successful. You will be successful. Do not be afraid. You will be successful. Just meditate on my word day and night, and you will be successful. Oh, God, if you were with Joshua, and you were with the people of Israel back then, and that was their word, Lord, I receive that word from me today, that as I stand with you, and I trust you, and I'm in your word, that everywhere I go and everything I do, I will succeed. I will be, I will accomplish the greatness you called me to. I am anointed. I am dangerous. I am a mighty voice for God. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. It starts in your head. It goes to your heart. It comes out of your mouth. You understand you can think yourself out of some stuff. Or you can think yourself into some stuff. Oh, Jesus. Because whatever you're thinking on, it eventually will go into your heart. And whatever you continue to think on goes into your heart, and then it starts to manifest. And it comes out of your mouth. It comes out in action. The Israelites and King Saul, they lost the battle when they heard the shout. Of the giant's voice they were it was over right there a shout paralyzed them there's something in the Bible that says our enemy prowls around like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour he, he, he comes around as See, that's the key word, as, as, not a lion, as, not a lion, as a roaring lion. How many people realize a roar can't touch you? It can't hurt you? It can't bite you. And we're allowing the shout and the roar of our giant to paralyze us from moving forward. And God's saying, trust me, and I'll give you a shout that's going to get your giants running. I dare you right now to shout. I dare you right now to shout. Shout like you know. You've got the victory. Shout like you know. This is not the end, but this is only the beginning. Shout like you know that this valley is not my end. It's not the conclusion in my life. It's only the beginning. It's a stepping stone. I dare you to shout. <laughs> Lift up your hands and say these words. God, I receive your word in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, welcome to Sunday morning service. Welcome to Sunday morning service. Let's get started. Amen. 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 Amen.
embrace your embrace your embrace embrace your valley that's where your spiritual muscles are developed if there's no pressure and there's no resistance when you're lifting weights your muscles don't get bigger and stronger they get bigger and stronger when the weight's heavier and there's resistance and then you build more strength and more muscle and you go to higher levels of weight and you get stronger and stronger you can't get bigger muscles and get stronger without the resistance of the weight the valley is the weight that strengthens our spiritual muscle don't run from a virus we stand in the name of jesus Don't shut down church. There's work to be done. We use wisdom. Praise the Lord. I got hand sanitizer in the car. Don't be foolish. Even after things settle down even more, I, I, I would encourage you to continue to use hand sanitizer. I think it's a good thing. Because that's how germs are spread. They tell us about our hands. and So use hand sanitizer. What I'm saying is let's learn from it. Let's get stronger because of it. Let's not get weaker because of it. Let's get wiser because of it. That's all I'm saying. But we can't move forward if we're not willing to get in the battle. Because we, you, I, we were all made for the battle. If I stepped away from this, I always joke with my wife, you know, sometimes when things, I'll, can I say one more thing and I'll be done, okay? Can I say one more thing? Thank you. Can I say one more thing? I was like, I was like, I, you know, when I have, when I'm having my moments, <laughs> I know you guys don't understand those moments, right? Where you're, you're shouting in the church and you go home and then you're like, you know, you know, one minute you praise the Lord. The next minute you're like, <laughs> <laughs> everything you're, you, you're, you're shouting and believing for the next minute, it's like the complete opposite. Yeah, we're going to make it. Everything's going to be all right. The next bit, it's like, man, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Woo! Welcome to my crazy mind. Man of great faith. And I believe everything I'm saying. But man, there's some moments, some challenges. There's been some times where I've said, you know what? When things happen, just the craziness of it sometimes. And there's some things that happen today in this season that if those things happened years ago, I would have lost my mind. But because I've had some valley experiences and had some victories over some giants, I'm able to handle today those certain situations that are similar to like five or 10 or 15 years ago and they don't affect me the way they did back then but but then you face new giants new challenges and then i'm looking at her and i'm like oh my good i'm ready i'm like you know what i mean i'm just like i can't i'm not sleeping good i'm like I'm, i go you know i get up here i, I preach i'm sweating i lose weight i'm like you know i'm you know I, I'm over 50 years old now. Praise the Lord. I know that it's hard to believe. I don't, you know, because I don't look bad. I'm thinking if I, I mean, there's sometimes I'm like, I, I've told people, and you know, you guys know, and some of the people in leadership, I've told them, you know, I go, I just, I don't bounce back the way I used to. It, and God's, re, and, and I'm reminded, I'm not 35. I'm not 40. I'm not 45. I'm going to be 52. And I look good, huh? 
I do. I know. But the reality is, I, I, I tell the, 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 the staff and the, and the team something, I, I, like, I'll, I'll walk out, it's like, my goodness, you know what? And there was a couple weeks where I tried to like rest and got other speakers, and I, and I told, and I was telling Sheila and everyone, I'm like, I go like two weeks into it, just being here but not preaching the way I usually preach, I go, I can feel the difference. I go, my God, I mean, just preaching like weekends and, and just over the years throughout the week and like the week before I was at Teen Challenge and then so it was Tuesday and then a Saturday and then a Sunday and then everything else that's going on. Like, you know what I mean? It, 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 it's just, it, I'm not saying, oh, look at me, oh, oh, you know, I mean, I'm just saying, I used to be able to just like preach and then get back up and just go at it again, no problem. My body would just bounce back if I just had a little bit of rest. It doesn't do that anymore. It's like I'm in bed. I'm like, okay, let's go. And my body turns around and says, where are we going? <laughs> my mind's getting out of bed. My body's still laying there. That's real. That's real. So as you grow older, right, you get a little more, you know, God's given wisdom to, I mean, you know, changes are made and to continue to grow and move forward. But there's got to be some wisdom. And God brings help. And, and that's what God's doing in this season of like transition and shifting here in this church and as many of you know like power bell said that a couple weeks ago there's a shift going on and god's got so much more for this church and i believe that so god's gonna you know but saying all that i'll, I'll look and i'm like I, I i i go i go i go to i go to my i go to sheila once in a while my wife and i go you know what maybe i can just you know you know just get a regular job and um, work you know, and I'm not going to mention the name of that because someone's going to take it the wrong way. I'm just, but I just like, you know, like a store, right? I go, I can just work there. I can work my 40 hours a week. Have, have my guaranteed two weeks paid vacation. Have insurance taken care of. And then know on the weekends I'm off, you know. I'm sure I can get a job and get a, a, a job during the week. Have my weekends off. You know, I got my degree now and, you know, my master's, you know, and all that. So I'm thinking about, you know, definitely with a master's degree now, right? You know, um, and that's crazy that even, and I'm not saying like, look at me, I'm just, you, know, you know, my heart. It's like, man, you know, life is the greatest educator, but it all worked out. So I'm thinking I, I can get like, you know, a job. And I think I could probably maybe be a manager somewhere, maybe. And I think maybe I could just do like 40 hours, come home on Friday and have Saturday and Sunday off. Have a couple weeks vacation somewhere in there, not having to worry like, oh, what's going on with the, <laughs> and checking in. And because, you know, it, wherever you go, the ministry comes with you all the time. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's like it's in you. And the crazy thing is when it's all said and done, do you know if I stepped away from this? Because this is what I was created for. Because I was created like you were for the battle. You were created for the battle to be a soldier in the world that God's placed you in. So watch this. If I walk away from this, eventually I'd be lost. I can get a job that pays me five times the amount of what I'm, you know, what's happening here. But this is where I've been called. This is what I was created for. I'd be leaving the valley that God's called me to. And eventually I'd be lost. Oh, I'd have weekends off. I'd, oh, I'd come to church on Sunday. Man, eventually I wouldn't be coming to church. Now you would say, come on, Pat. No, because this is what I was built for. Yeah, if it's in me, I'm going to come to church and just be able to sit there. Then I'm going to want to get back in. And I've already got back out. So what, you know, it's, 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 so I got to make a decision. So eventually, if I'm, gonna, if I'm crazy and I'm thinking, it's like I'm going to stay away from this because it's too much. And I, you know, and I just want to just have some, some rest. That rest will take me away from God's will in my life. This is it to the end. There's no retirement. You know, I'm just waiting till I reti retire. And by the way, you might say I'm not in ministry or in the, in the church. You know, so, so, so what, you know, don't I get No, we never retire from the work of the Lord. How long are you going to sit on a couch and watch TV for? We're made to move. We're made to fight. Where are my fighters at? Where are my... I've been called to scrap. 
Where are my squappers at in the spirit? That's what gives us life. Do you understand what I'm saying? The pressure. The pressure. That's who you are. That's what makes you great and is making you greater. And God's not going to give you more you can handle. God is strengthening you and making you into the woman of God that God's called you to be. You're made for this. You were created for this. You are made for the pressure. Step away from that. This will make you, even though it's the thing that you're, the thing that drives you crazy, the thing that wants you to, makes you want to quit, the thing that has you complaining sometimes, it's the thing that gives you life. Amen. The thing that I'm, I get angry at and upset about and the, it's uncomfortable, it's the thing that I need. Does anybody understand what I just said? Isn't it crazy? The valley that I hate, the valley that I want out of, is the thing I need in my life. Amen. Woo. Woo. Yes. That's heavy right there. Yeah. Lord. The thing that I yeah. complain about sometimes is the thing if it's taken out of my life, I'd be lost. Oh, Jesus. Is, are you all right? Yeah. Stop right there. Lift up your hand say, I receive it. I receive it. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm going to stop right there. Is that good? Are you glad you came? Fighting us, man. <laughs> Made for this. That's why God says, put on the full armor of God. Put on the full armor of God for what? For battle. That passage... In Ephesians prophesies to you and me a battle is ahead of us Amen. and it also prophesies that I've given you all the tools God says to be successful in the battle so put on the full armor of God we don't wrestle against flesh and blood you don't understand our battles not in the physical it's in the spirit that's why I pick up the word, the weapons, praise, worship, the word. Amen. Amen. Show yes! Let's do this. Okay, let me, let me do this real quick. And we're going to, let's just do this and then we're going to worship just can we just worship here at the end and and then we'll dismiss okay okay let's take the offering let's do two things let's do two things let's um let's pass out the flyers first the flyers so okay okay so april 4th first sunday of next month easter service resurrection sunday outdoor service watching at home outdoor service come on And for some that, you know, have been just kind of like, are trying to like say, okay, you know, I want to get, I want to, I know it's time for me to get back to church, you know, I want to take a step. What a great, what a great starting point. Come outside, find a spot that you feel comfortable with. Praise the Lord out in the open air. Amen. Come on now. So regular time, 1030 in the parking lot. And we're going to give out baskets to all the children afterwards. Okay. So Easter baskets, so invite somebody. Let's be a blessing. Let's impact the world around us. So let's get these flyers out. Invite them to church. First Sunday of, of April, 1030, outdoor service. 
and let them know we're going to be blessing the children also, okay? Praise the God. And then right afterwards, also, like always, we'll have food boxes available for everybody also, okay? And food boxes are available once again here today, right after service, right across the parking lot. Amen. So that's, that's April 4th. Don't forget tomorrow night we have prayer, 7 o'clock. Wednesday night, life groups, Joyce Meyer, Battlefield of the Mind. See, David's mind was right, which led him to be able to say what he said to gain the victory. If we can get our minds right before we leave the house in the morning, <laughs> look at some say everything will be all right. So I encourage you to be here on Wednesday night. Phenomenal turnout. I'm so encouraged to see everybody that has stepped up and has, you know, uh, made it here. And um, it just lets me know that God's, you know, it's bringing unity to the church also to where God wants to take us. Amen. Because we're all on the same page here in the same thing as we move forward. So God bless you for that. So that's Wednesday at 7 o'clock. And, um, and don't forget outreach next Saturday, Saturday morning. There it is. Uh, March 27th, next Saturday, we're going to meet here at 9.30, coffee, donuts, and then we're going to go out into the neighborhood around 10, 10.30-ish. Um, but we'll meet here at 9.30, so we'll, we'll, we'll head on out. By 10.30, we're going to be out and about. So make sure you get here before 10.30, and we're going to go out and invite everybody to, our, to, the, to the Easter service. Yeah. So, we're, it's a, so Resurrection Sunday, man, it's a soul-winning service. Amen? Yeah. So if we do the possible, God will do the impossible. Amen? I always believe if you bring them, They'll get saved. Amen. Just get them here and God will do the rest. Amen. And um, so that's next Saturday, um, 930 in the morning. If you're able to be here, all hands on deck. We need help to get the word out. Okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you ready to give? So why don't you come up here and pray for the offering? Come up here. I want you to pray for the offering. Amen. You giant slayer. You, 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 you head cutter. I, I just didn't. Praise the Lord. Look at him say, make it a good one. Watching at home, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your support as we continue to move forward for the glory of God. Outreaches as we, as we continue with the outreaches television ministry now we're working on getting like i said the other night um, um new cameras are coming in so they online we're gonna have four different cameras operating just trying to take it to the next level amen as we continue to move forward and um you know our orphanage overseas in uganda amen just god's moving amen, amen. so that's what you're sowing into for the glory of god praise god amen father god in the mighty and powerful name of jesus I pray that you continue to bless this ministry and you would bless right now every person that is giving, every person that has a weight in their hearts right now that you would touch with your Holy Spirit, with the power of your Spirit, Lord God, and you would change right now, transform and set people free, even as they give in this exact moment. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Praise God. Let me read a scripture to you as we take the offer. And the, and the ushers will come to you. Just lift up your hand if you have your tithes or offerings, okay? Nahum chapter 1 verse 7 the Lord is good a stronghold in the day of trouble and he knows he knows those who trust in him anybody love God amen praise God let's work let's just take the offering we'll worship a few minutes and then we'll close in prayer amen praise God I have carried a burden too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it.
Right now, I just want to close in prayer. Praise the Lord. And watching at home. There might be somebody watching at home right now. Or even right now here. Or maybe just on the way out right now. Your miracle and your turnaround starts with the relationship with Jesus. And I just want to pray this. And let's all pray this together. The Bible says, those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Just say, Jesus, help me. Save me. I believe that those who call upon your name shall be saved so I ask you to come into my heart and be Lord and Savior of my life from this day forth I'm all yours wash me with your blood and renew a right spirit within me and from this day forth use me to impact others for your glory in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We love you. God bless you. If you need a Bible, there's Bibles available in the bookstore. We'll see you next week.